Hi there everybody, today I wanted to talk to you a little bit about how I start a fresh day of playing the trumpet. With me for my demonstration is my trumpet. Let's begin. There's a lot of ways to isolate embouchure muscles and do isometric exercises to help your trumpet playing. You've probably heard of free buzzing. You probably heard of mouthpiece buzzing. If you're lucky, maybe you can have a rim to buzz on. And all of these are ways to train your embouchure muscles with varying degrees of resistance before you start playing the instrument. Some people love them, some people hate them. They're out there for players to discover and use at their own discretion. One type of buzzing that I don't hear too much about, considering how readily accessible it is, as opposed to something like buzzing on a mouthpiece rim, which is rare enough, is this, the lead pipe. I don't hear a lot of people talk about lead pipe buzzing, and today I want to talk about it and maybe fill in a couple gaps as to why I do it and maybe why you should do it. This lead pipe acts as somewhat of an intermediate between the mouthpiece and the trumpet. Buzzing the mouthpiece yields a very, very different muscular and physical experience from actually playing the trumpet. For one thing, there's no such thing as a locked-in pitch on the mouthpiece, whereas the trumpet has very specific slots where it wants you to hit a certain note on a certain finger. Now, the mouthpiece also has much less resistance than the trumpet. There's not a lot of tubing there. It's about three and a half inches. So the mouthpiece isn't always a great reflection of how your playing works on the trumpet. What I like about lead pipe buzzing is it provides some of that resistance and some of that locked in feeling while still having a little bit of leeway on each pitch that you buzz on the lead pipe. And it gives you a little bit more familiarity to work with so that you're not enforcing bad habits on the mouthpiece and then transferring them over to the trumpet. So when you start buzzing the lead pipe, you should probably have a piano keyboard beside you so that you can test the pitch and sort of find where you play most relaxed. The lead pipe should resonate at about a concert D or an E flat, depending on the length of your lead pipe. Because my lead pipe is reversed, it may be a small, very small amount longer than some lead pipes, but it should resonate at about a concert D. That can be bent up to an E flat. It can be bent down to a D flat. And different players will experience different results with this. I try to center around a concert D. That is relaxed enough for me that I'm not blowing up into the E flat and I'm, yet I'm moving my air fast enough that I'm not letting the pitch sag into a D-flat. For quite a number of my Instagram followers, I have done one or more private lessons. Since I've had a few people comment about this, I figured I would provide an interjection here about my lesson service, if you do not already know. I offer a limited number of online slots for lessons. We can do Zoom, we can do FaceTime, Skype, anything that's preferable for you. The way you end up with a lesson with me, if you feel so inclined, is you go over to my Instagram, private message me, telling me who you are and what you're looking to work on, and we can set something up. For quite a number of my Instagram followers, I have done one or more private lessons, and I always start them out the same way. Especially if I do not know this student, the first thing we do is I have them take off the tuning slide and go... <sighs> Nice, comfortable volume, no tongue. That is how I prefer to do these. No tongue whatsoever, so that you're forced to blow through the tube. You can't let the tongue do the work for you. So no tongue on the first attack. Okay, we hear what this first note sounds like, we find where that concert D sits, then we bend it downward. Half step, whole step, it doesn't matter terribly much, but we continue this until we're able to do a full octave. that does for people is it loosens up their sound, it gets them blowing a little bit more air down the tube because that, um, that lower frequency, even though your lips will be more open and sort of more relaxed, you have to blow a little bit more vigorously down the pipe for it to work. Logically, it just takes basically double the air by simple physics. So this is phase two of my lead pipe routine. I don't do this a lot with my private students, but after having done that first harmonic, that D natural, having bent it down a little bit, bent it down an octave, and just ended on a nice, relaxed, sustained concert D, I take it to the higher harmonics. Now, it doesn't go up exactly an octave. I mean, you would 
hope on a, on a piece of tubing that your second harmonic is an octave up from your first harmonic. That's not necessarily so in this case. A very cylindrical tube like this with not a lot of taper is going to have an extremely flat fundamental and the next harmonic up consequently is going to be more than an octave away. So the next harmonic on this pipe is about a concert F. Oh. So you can think of this as uh, basically an F piccolo bugle. If you had a, a piccolo trumpet pitched in F and you removed the valves, this is what this would be. And after that, it goes up in sort of an F harmonic series. Uh, approximately. You know, there's, there's a little too much wiggle room to say for sure, but it's basically in the key of F. So what I do with these higher harmonics is I will start on that F and I will transition up to the C and back down and find where that break occurs and slowly start doing it faster. Uh, that's not the best demonstration, but I basically start as a very slow lip slur and turn it into a shake progressively. It's nice to do these with the metronome so that you have a sense of pulse and you start subdividing them from quarters into eighths and then sixteenths. You can do triplets if you want. Triplets just throw me off. It feels weird to do groups of three when there's two notes. Um, after that, I take it to the next F up. And this really, really opens up my high register because even though there is some resistance here, especially compared to the mouthpiece, it's not as much as the horn. It gets you blowing steadily without too much pressure, and it really enforces the healthier habits of your trumpet playing so that when you put the tuning slide back on, it pops out for you. Usually lead pipe buzzing for me is a little bit more of a warm-up tool than a workout, but if I'm looking for a workout, then we move to phase three, which is some more advanced pitch bending rather than just bending that D fundamental pitch. We work in the higher harmonics, we do much larger and uh, more diverse bends, and we can actually play a full on scale on just the lead pipe. No valves involved. You can finger along if it helps you psychologically, but you can actually play a full C scale on just the lead pipe. C. It's very finagly and it takes a lot of work. You can even try a B flat scale if you want. That B flat really does not want to sit for me. So again, this is more of a workout. It's a pitch workout, it is a muscular workout, it is an air workout. You are getting worked out like crazy. Lead pipe doesn't. <laughs> Lead pipe buzzing doesn't get taught as readily as things like mouthpiece buzzing because it's not as well understood, I think. I certainly don't claim to understand every nuance of this pipe and why we do it and, you know, all of that. But at its core, I really like this exercise, this tool that we have available to us, and I've used it with really great results on just about all of my trumpet students. So the lead pipe is really an air tool. It allows you to use a viable amount of air without spreading your chops apart, whereas the mouthpiece, it's, it yields very mixed results for certain people. I've never been a good mouthpiece buzzer, I don't think I ever will be, and in some ways it hasn't been necessary up to this point, and I've focused mainly on developing my skills on the lead pipe, which feel more transferable to the trumpet. So you'll notice we don't do a lot of tonguing stuff. With my students, I really just have them do air attacks on all of this. I slur almost everything I do on the lead pipe, and that's for the simple reason that we're simplifying the puzzle here. This is an air workout. This is not some dexterity thing on the fingers. This is not a double tonguing workout. It's none of that. It's an air exercise to get your air going at the beginning of the day and enforce your healthy habits so that when you start playing the full trumpet with the tuning slide attached, then you don't have problems with starting the note. You don't have problems with articulating and sustaining notes. It all just comes a little bit more naturally to you, in my opinion, after you use the lead pipe. So that'll basically round off my video on lead pipe buzzing. I hope you've enjoyed. Give it a try. It might not work for everybody, but I've seen it work with much more consistent results than mouthpiece buzzing up to this point. Thank you for watching.